Has this ever happened to you? You've been working on a watercolor painting and bam, the paper begins to buckle and bend. Oh no, what are you gonna do? Well, I'm here to bring you a few tips and tricks to help fight and prevent watercolor paper buckling. Today was the first day in a long while that I had a chunk of time to work on a painting. And I really wanted to do a full length like video from start to finish of creating a painting piece, but it actually ended up not having enough time to finish this painting. It's still in the process because good art sometimes just takes time. But I didn't want to leave you guys without a video and I didn't want to rush a painting and kind of give you something that was not so great. So we're going to just look at this beginning creation part of this piece and address a problem that many watercolor artists face and that is paper buckling. When your watercolor paper begins to warp and bend and twist, it can make it hard to paint because as your paper is buckling up, all the water wants to run down and puddle, and that can be a really big problem. So I am going to share with you guys a couple of tips and things that I do to help prevent this from happening as much. And then a really big tip that I have, if the watercolor paper buckles, how do I get it to flatten out? If you enjoyed this type of video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you're brand new to my channel, hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any future videos. And let's just jump into the painting. So the piece that I am painting right now is from my line artwork that I did in September and then inked it in October and I was supposed to color it in November, but November just did not happen. I mean, I think it just forgot to happen. We went from October to December. I don't know. I have vague memories of Thanksgiving dinner. But that's it. But of all my pieces that I did in Inktober, this is the one that I was most excited to color. And this is the Queen of Hearts. Kind of a child version, a younger version of the Queen of Hearts. Now I did these as line arts so I could print them off and color them using Copic markers or colored pencils, but I really wanted to watercolor this. Unfortunately, because of time constraints, I knew I couldn't do that because to to put this onto watercolor paper, I was going to have to print it off and then put it on the light box and then transfer the image over and it would take a long time. This is a Copic marker or color pencil piece only, just face it. And then I got to thinking, could I print this off on watercolor paper? Now, technically one would think, of course, you can print anything out on your printer, or, you know, just put watercolor paper in there instead of regular paper and just print it off. But the trouble that I've always had is that printer paper is different size than watercolor paper. And every time I try to put my watercolor paper in there, my printer's like, mm -mm, girl, this is not the right size paper and we're not printing for you. So I did a lot of trial and error and figuring this out and I got it to work. And maybe all of you know how to do this and, and I'm late to this game of figuring out how to make printers print on abnormally odd shaped papers, but I had never figured this out before. So if you're like me and you're thinking, oh, I don't know how to do that either, let me know in the comment section below and I will do a little video tutorial on how I did it so that you guys can do it too. One thing I will say is when I printed it out, I lightened the image up considerably. I didn't want really dark lines. In fact, I wanted almost like a ghosting, just enough so that I could see the image. But when the watercolor painting was complete, you're not going to see the lines of the printer. After that, I put in some Canson watercolor paper and printed it out. This is like such a game changer for me because there's so many images that I have a line art on my computer that I would love to do in watercolor. And who oh, are the possibilities? Now I just need time to watercolor. Anyway, back to the topic of hand. So while I was painting this, I wanted the colors just to be really flowy, especially the, the base color. I wetted all of the central part of the paper down because I wanted to lay in some blotches of color and have those bleed into each other to kind of make a softer appearance. But then inevitably what happened is my paper began to buckle. This is a problem that you face with watercolor paper. To fight this, you have to understand why watercolor paper does this. And that's because it's watercolor paper is a compressed fiber. Um, think of it as like a dry sponge that you dry really flat, but when you add water to it, it puffs up. 
very similar to watercolor paper. And when it comes in contact with water, then it begins to puff up. But only the parts that are wet puff up. So because I didn't wet the entire paper down, as I worked, the parts that had a lot of water puffed up, while the parts that were dry stayed condensed, which caused an irregular surface tension on the paper, causing it to warp and buckle and bend. There are a couple things that artists do to help prevent this. One is to pre-stretch your watercolor paper, which is a whole process, and I'm not even gonna try to tell you how to do that. I've never really successfully done it before, but there are a lot of videos out there. Another thing that you can do, and this is a technique that I often will do, is to tape my edges. This doesn't eliminate the buckling and fluffing of your paper, but it does help hold the paper down for you. You can also go out and purchase watercolor blocks, which are your pads of paper, but they're sealed on almost all four sides. And that again helps to prevent your buckling and warping as much. So those are a few tips to prevent it. But what if like in this piece, you're in the middle of it and it is buckling and warping and you're like, ah, this is not going to work. So this is a technique that I use a lot while creating watercolor pieces and almost every single time when I finish a watercolor piece to help flatten it out and make it look nice before I either frame it or sell it. So it comes in a couple of different steps. You need the painting to be dry. You definitely don't want to do this when you have just finished painting and everything is fresh and still smudgy because you're going to smudge your paper out and it's going to be yucky. So give your painting a couple hours to dry. Once it's really nicely dry, then you can move on to this process. So, so let's jump over to my work table and I'll show you how. So what I'm gonna do, and you can do this, you can do this process at any point during the middle of your painting or at the end. Um, but first you're going to want to let this piece completely dry. You don't want it to, the paint to be wet because it's going to smudge off some of your paint if it is wet. So this is dried overnight. I'm gonna take some clean paper towels. I'm gonna lay that down right there. I'm gonna take my painting and I'm going to place it painting side down. And then I have a mister bottle. Again, you can use a bottle or a sponge or a paintbrush. And you're just going to mist the back side of your paper. So it's nice and shiny. You don't want it soaking like drippy drip wet. You'll find just the right amount of wetness that you need. You just want things to get a little bit wet on this side, not so much on the painted side. Then I'm gonna take another few pieces of paper towel and just lay that on the back. The last step is to take a few heavy books and lay it on top. The more weight, the better it's going to work. So I have, this is the pad of paper that I actually use. I'm gonna put that on top of there. I have a good Art of Moana, Art of Tangled. See, these art books are so awesome. You can use them for the amazing art inside, but you can also use them to push down your artwork. Then I'm gonna let this sit for maybe an hour and you're gonna find that your paper is much more flat and easy to work with. So let's check back in about one hour. Okay. It's been about an hour. I print and cut out a whole bunch of this month's sticker sheets. So, hey, if you're interested, ooh, very clear. If you're interested in purchasing the Snow Globe and Gingy Pack, it's only available to the end of December 2019. And then they're gone forever. Ooh. But now I'm going to go ahead and check to see how this is. So let's take these books off and see what we got. They're so heavy. Now remember before this paper was all warbly and buckled and everything, but now let's peel back the curtain of paper towel and check that out. A wonderfully flat piece once again. So a couple things again to remember about this process. One, let this side dry, the paint dry completely before you flatten it and press it out. Then you want to make sure that you wet the back side because you don't want to reactivate your paints on this side. It doesn't have to be soaking wet, but a good shine on everything. 
And then by placing your paper towels on the top and the bottom of this paper just helps absorb any excess water, helps the drying process uh, happen a little bit faster. But the key is flat and good amount of weight on the whole thing, giving it a good amount of time to dry. So I will do this a lot of times if I am painting on something and it's getting warbly. I'll let it dry a little bit before bed and then I will do this process, let it sit overnight and it is absolutely wonderful. It works every single time. But now I'm ready to get back into painting this, adding some more work. This whole piece was supposed to be like today's video, but art, it takes time and I just ran out of time. So I decided to give you a little video tip trick on how to battle warping paper. But if you're interested in seeing how this piece progresses and what the finished piece looks like, follow me on my social media. I have my Instagram in the description box below. That's where I post a lot of pictures for my art videos over there. So pieces that you never see here on my YouTube channel, you can take a look over there. So if you guys have any tips and tricks for flattening your watercolor paper out, let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you're interested in getting the line art for this piece, I have just released it in a five pack over on my Etsy shop. So it's this image plus four other lovely fairy tale ladies. Um, I will leave a link to my Etsy shop in the description box below so you can jump over there and check it out. Also, a big thanks to all my patrons. Thank you so much for all your support and helping me to continue to create art content on this channel. If you'd like more information about joining my Patreon page, I'll leave a link to that as well in the description box below. Anyway, God bless you guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. And as always, stay creative and we'll see you in the next art video. Bye-bye.